Welcome to this course on organic chemistry in biology and drug development. In the last session, we have discussed the various techniques by which uh, a DNA can be amplified. Uh, one is one is called polymerase chain reaction, other was the rDNA technology. Okay. So, far that means, we have covered, we started with the, the building blocks of uh, living systems, amino acids, carbohydrates and I have shown some structure of lipids and then we went to uh, for the study of amino acid chemistry and then the proteins, their structure determination, uh, their detection, their separation and the proteins uh, which act as biocatalysts that is the enzyme chemistry and this was followed by uh, the we went to different types of enzyme inhibitors, then we went to the nucleic acids and we covered the DNA, RNA um, central dogma of biology. Okay. Today we will uh, again go back to the enzyme chemistry because at that time I told you I mentioned that sorry this that in many of the enzymatic reactions there is a need of a small organic molecule or a metal ion for the enzyme to egg to show its catalytic activity. Okay. Now, the a general term is used for that which is called a cofactor. So, cofactor basically is a is any non protein molecule that enables an otherwise inactive enzyme to catalyze a reaction. Okay. So, they work by binding to the enzyme's active site and modify and modify it so that the target substrate will bind as well. Okay. So, that means in many enzymatic reactions what we find that apart from the enzyme which is catalytically inactive when it is alone there are some small molecules or metal ions which are required for the enzyme to show its activity. And the mechanism for that is generally that the uh, cofactor goes and binds to the active site of the, of the enzyme or sometimes the cofactor is already bound to the active site and then as you add the substrate, the substrate is converted to the product. Okay. Now, when the cofactor, remember cofactor can be an inorganic metal ions or metal ions or small organic molecules. Okay. So, uh, when it is a small organic molecule, it is called a coenzyme. Okay. Coenzymes can be divided uh, into two categories. In one, the coenzyme can be added from outside. So, at the time of reaction it goes and binds temporarily to the enzyme active site and then is released and then so that it can catalyze other enzyme um, the molecules of the same enzyme. So, that the turnover number gets increased. Okay. In some enzymatic reactions this coenzyme is permanently bound to the enzyme. Okay. Now, when an enzyme is without the cofactor, that means when the cofactor, now remember again what I just uh, say that cofactor is a very general term. So, it could be metal ions or it could be small organic molecules, organic molecules. Now, if it is small organic molecules, then it is called a coenzyme. So, remember coenzymes are also cofactors and this coenzyme can be divided into two. One is where it is, it, it goes and binds temporarily as the reaction proceeds and then is released again. So, in that case it is also called a co-substrate, you can because the substrate also uh, very similar, it does uh, the reaction by going into the active site and then changes into the product. Here the coenzymes are transiently bound and then uh, the reaction is catalyzed and in many occasions 
the coenzymes are uh, are released, but in another form which has to be again converted to the coenzyme form. So, in that case it is called a co substrate and in the other case where it is it is bound to the enzyme that is um, so those are called prosthetic groups. So, one is co substrate another is prosthetic group. Okay, prosthetic group. So, now we know that co there are cofactors which are essential for the enzyme to show its activity. Cofactors can be two types metal ions or coenzymes. Coenzymes are basically when the cofactor is organic and then if it is transiently associated then that is called uh, co substrates and if it is permanently bound to the enzyme that is called a prosthetic group. Okay. Now, question is uh, one thing is very clear that some of the cofactors are metal ions. So, we will discuss the metal ion catalyzed enzymatic reactions separately, but the other part when the cofactor is organic that means, when they are coenzymes they are it is written that they are usually derived from the vitamins. Okay. So, vitamins you know that uh, there are these are small molecules which are uh, organic molecules which are essential for the uh, for the body's um, for the body's growth and many of these metabolic activities. And uh, so, these metabolic activities or growth that is related to some transformation and which is catalyzed by the enzymes. So, many of these vitamins are actually they are precursor to the coenzyme. So, it is said that coenzymes are usually derived from vitamins. So, that means, the vitamin itself is not the cofactor or the coenzyme. So, vitamin is nothing but you can say it is a pro cofactor or you can call it coenzyme pro coenzyme. Okay. So, this um, has to be converted by some chemical transformation to the actual coenzyme form, actual coenzyme form. Okay. So, vitamins remember they are pro coenzymes and in the body system they are converted into another form which is the active form that means, which is the real coenzyme and that takes part in the in the reaction okay, that help the enzyme to catalyze the reaction. Okay. Now, these vitamins you know they are classified into two groups one is lipid or fat soluble vitamins lipid soluble that means, it is soluble in organic solvents. Okay. So, lipids are basically the biomaterials which are soluble in the organic solvent. So, lipid soluble vitamins these are A, D, E and K and, uh, but many of these like A and K are they are actually precursor to the coenzymes. Whereas, uh, D and E they have a different function they do not actually help in any enzymatic uh, catalysis they do not do that but they have some different function. That means, all vitamins are not precursors to coenzymes. It is uh, if you consider the lipid soluble vitamins then A and K are the coenzymes D and E uh, D is actually a hormone and E is basically an antioxidant which removes the reactive oxygen species uh, in the living system. Okay. We will talk about this reactive oxygen species later on because that is a very important one which is which is basically the causative agent for uh, breakdown of uh, cells and then that causes aging and diseases like cancer or other uh, degenerative diseases. Okay. So, A and K are the uh, are precursors to coenzymes. Now, because these are lipid soluble. So, their structure you will see uh, their structure uh, should be somewhere yes. This is the lipid soluble vitamin these are vitamin A general this is the structure and then you have vitamin E that is an antioxidant. Then you have vitamin this is we have shown the D 2 which is 
required for calcium metabolism and bone growth. So, this is not a cofactor and then you have vitamin K 1 that is that participates in uh, blood clotting ok that is a blood clotting factor ok. On the other hand there are water soluble vitamins which are uh, in this group the many of these B vitamins are there and the vitamin C. Their function is mainly as enzyme cofactors. They are hydrophilic compounds easily dissolve in water. They are not read, stored in the body, not readily stored, excreted from the body and they are uh, they are consistent daily intake is very important because they take part in the uh, many of these enzymatic reactions which are involved in metabolism. Okay, I think I have shown that vitamins. So, this is the some of the B vitamins, uh, the names are given here not the structure we, we can we will go into the structure later on. So, there is thiamine B 1 this are you have read in the school level there is thiamine, niacin, riboflavin, pantothenic acid, pyridoxal, cobalamin, biotin, lipoic acid and folic acid. Okay. We will uh, try to cover their, um, their chemistry or the biochemistry rather and as I said this is the vitamin and this is the coenzyme form like thiamine has to be converted into thiamine pyrophosphate, niacin has to be converted into NAD plus or NADP plus ok. And then so all these are uh, basically uh, converted into the actual active coenzyme. Now, we will start with vitamin E that is one of the coenzyme ok. Now, vitamin E is a necessary uh, we know that vitamin A is necessary for our vision ok. Now, the chemistry of vision is very interesting here we start with a molecule which is called retinol this is the structure of retinol and look at this structure it is a it, it contains if you count the number of carbon atoms 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 and 20. So, this 20 that means, it is a diterpene ok is derived from the uh, derived from the uh, biosynthesis of uh, terpene ok. Now, actually what happens this retinol we get from uh, maybe we, I can write it here we, we get from carotene that we know that if we take lot of carrots then uh, it, it protects our vision ok. So, carotene what is the uh, the orange yellow pigment that is present in the carrot. So, carotene actually is a formula which has got the double the uh, double the number of carbon atoms it is a C 40 unit. So, from C 40 unit it goes to the this retinol which is you see that double bond stereochemistry and that is all trans. So, this is called all trans retinol. Now, this is converted by an enzyme called uh, by an enzyme called retinol isomerase ok. And so, the double bond here you see that is now present in the cisoid form in the cis form not the cisoid form it is a cis form ok. And that number if you do the numbering this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, that position is called 11 that is why this is called 11 cis retinol ok. This 11 cis retinol is oxidized by the retinol dehydrogenase dehydrogenase is an enzyme which ox which is a which is a redox enzyme. So, that uh, oxidizes the C H 2 H into C H O. So, that becomes 11 cis retinal ok. You do not have to write aldehyde you can write just 11 cis retinal L means aldehyde. And then there is a protein called uh, there is a protein called opsin that opsin protein has a lysine residue and this lysine then reacts and forms the this imine ok lysine you have a side chain which is amine and that reacts with the aldehyde and forms the imine. Then this is what is called the rhodopsin ok and then as light 
falls on it, then there is this change in uh, configuration of the double bond that 11 cis double bond goes into the 11 all trans form. Okay. So, all trans form. So, that means there is a change in the geometry of the molecule because cis cisoid means you have to have a system which looks like this because this is a cis double bond and transoid means now you can have a flat straight chain. Okay. So, there is a change in the in the uh, in the overall geometry of the molecule and that creates that creates what is the, a signal which is called the optical signal and that is then processed uh, in the brain and that is and then we see the whatever is in front of us. So, this is what is we are telling see first it is that trans retinal Okay, I told I told about the retinol isomerase. Similarly, you have retinal iso isomerase. Retinal isomerase is what? Retinal isomerase is aldehyde. Uh, the all trans aldehyde goes to 11 cis retinal, and then it reacts with the opsin protein forms the rhodopsin. Rhodopsin in presence of light uh, creates a conformational change, and that creates a signal and ultimately that signal is processed in the brain and that gives us the vision. Now, to see the next set of images what we have to do now the rhodopsin is photo excited and then it is transferred to the trans retinal. Trans retinal does not react with the with the opsin protein. So, it is released now and then via retinal isomerase you can go into 11 cis cis 1 again back to cis and then cis goes to the rhodopsin forms the rhodopsin. Okay. You can also have the retinol that there is retinol dehydrogenase that can reduce it to the alcohol because I told you retinol uh, dehydrogenase is a redox enzyme. So, depending on the substrate either it will oxidize or it will reduce. So, it goes to the trans retinal retinol and then that goes to the, the retinal isomerase works in the dark okay. when there is no light it can it is an enzyme that is that converts it to 11 cis retinol and then it again basically this is a reversible process. So, when you need the aldehyde it goes to the aldehyde whatever aldehyde is there that forms the rhodopsin. So, basically what happens that as first trans retinol is converted into the 11 cis 11 cis reacts with the rhodopsin opsin forms the rhodopsin and then as light is uh, is incident upon this rhodopsin molecule, then um, then you have this uh, change of conformation, uh, change of configuration from cis to trans, and that creates a change of conformation or geometry, and then creates a signal processed in the brain. And then what happens to this? Uh, because here it is, it becomes the trans, so that has to be converted again back to the aldehyde either by retinal isomerase or it can be reduced to retinol trans retinol and then 11 cis retinol and then goes to the aldehyde. So, that is the uh, simplified uh, biochemistry of a vision. Okay. Now, if you want to know that how these um, in light I think we, we know that when we shine light because the cis configuration is the is the relatively unstable one as compared to the trans. So, when light is uh, light is um, incident on this double bond. So, cis can go to the trans because trans is the thermodynamically more stable one. So, that goes via the excited state where there is no uh, there, there basically there is single bond at the and then it rotates and then releases the releases the light okay. and then it goes to the trans form. Okay. So, that is the mechanism of the as the light is incident uh, on the on, on uh, rhodopsin. Okay. Rhodopsin contains the cis configuration, but the question is how this trans one by retinol uh, you can ask that retinol isomerase uh, converts the trans to the cis, but which double bond it is only the 11th double bond okay, which is by the way is least substituted one in this case because all are tri substituted all the double bonds are uh, tri or tetra substituted. So, this is the one which nature has picked to do the isomerization reversible isomerization. Okay. 
So, this one, one mechanism is that uh, this which that is retinol is converted to an ester fatty acid ester and then a nucleophile the enzyme that is retinol isomerase. So, this is basically retinol isomerase that is the nucleophile that adds to the double bond because this double bond uh, can do a, what is called uh, SN2 double prime type of reaction SN2 double prime because what is SN2 prime that if you have a living group here and if the nucleophile attacks here that is called SN SN2 prime ok. But in this case it is a it is another double bond here. So, it is you can say that this is SN2 double prime ok. So, that goes here that comes here L leaves. So, as this leaves so you have a double bond here and enzyme nucleophile has added to the double bond, but what is that what it has created it has created a single bond here single bonds are free to rotate. So, at that time it rotates forms the cis configuration and then in the cis configuration water comes and attacks this and that and the bond migration goes like this there is some mistake that cannot happen. So, this goes here that goes there that is ok and this leaves. So, that creates the transoid uh, the cisoid geometry ok this is one mechanism. Another mechanism is via uh, via just without attacking by the nucleophile you can release it because this gives an allyl this is a very stable carbocation. So, now you can draw many of the resonating structures. So, one of the resonating structure where there will be no double bond here because that will be stabilized like this and at that time it rotates and goes to the cis and then water comes and attacks the uh, the terminal carbon ok. So, these are the basically the two mechanisms that have been proposed for this retinal uh, retinol to trans retinol to 11 cis retinol ok. So, that takes care of the of the vitamin E chemistry uh, biochemistry apart from vision vitamin e is also very important uh, there could be other functions vitamin A e is the precursor of the coenzyme ok. That is the 11 cis retinal that we know ok, but it is also used um, it plays a part in gene transcription immune function embryonic development reproduction bone metabolism hematopoiesis that means red blood cell formation skin health and antioxidant activity because it has got lot of double bonds. So, it can consume radicals uh, very quickly radicals can add to it uh, oxygen radicals ok. So, apart from coenzyme chemistry just you that is just for your information that it is not only important for vision biochemistry where it acts as a coenzyme, but it is also important in other many other functions. So, a deficiency uh, causes many types of problems ok. Now, next come to the vitamin D, vitamin D will quickly go through uh, because this is not an a coenzyme I told you vitamin D is basically a, a hormone. Now, what is a hormone? Hormone is usually uh, usually secreted by glands and then it is uh, transmitted through the blood stream to different places in the body and then it has got its receptors and uh, receptors are basically proteins and then it binds to the receptor and creates a signal and that is uh, and that starts a cascade of reactions. So, that is what is hormone. Now, um, so it is important is it is not a uh, it is not a coenzyme ok not a precursor of coenzyme. So, vitamin D 3 is obtained from uh, a well known substrate that is 7 dehydrocholesterol that means which is having an extra double bond uh, 7 dehydro that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that means the extra double bond is there. So, that is called 7 dehydrocholesterol otherwise cholesterol is a saturated framework here ok. Now, this 7 dehydrocholesterol in presence of light it ha it has got a six member ring with a diene framework ok. And I think those who have studied organic chemistry and pericyclic reaction they know very well 
that this type of molecules when we li uh, shine light then it can open up and the process is called an electrocyclic ring opening reaction. Okay. Electrocyclic ring opening reaction sorry this is not the double bond yes this is this is the double bond uh, no, just a second. So, you have a double bond here, you have a double bond here and you have a double bond here. So, it gives to a, it is uh, it's an triene now you get okay. from a cyclic diene you get a get an acyclic triene. Okay. Now, if you have substituents here suppose I have these substituents A and B. Now, if you there are two modes of electrocyclization or uh, this ring opening process can take place and the two modes are one is disrotatory and the other is what is called conrotatory. Now, the disrotatory means the orbitals here which forms the sigma bond they move in opposite direction that means, if it goes in the clockwise direction that goes in the anti clockwise direction. So, if this is clockwise that is anti clockwise. So, if uh, in disrotatory motion what happens that this A and B which are earlier cis uh, to each other they go in the uh, they appear in the same direction that means, see the double bond geometry is like this this is sp 2 carbon. So, the question is where will be the A and B the A and B will be either both are outside and this is hydrogen suppose or they could be inside or they could be here B and they are A and they are hydrogen and hydrogen. So, A or B either inwards both go inwards or they could be outward. So, both are possible both the isomers that is for disrotatory motion. For corn rotatory motion because they move in the same direction the because they move in the same direction. So, both are clockwise then what happens this A and B uh, one goes inward and the other goes outward. So, basically you can get one of the product I will show that if this is B then A will be this. Okay. Now, the if you have A and B sorry if you have A and B A and B trans to each other then what will happen that if it is disrotatory now if it is trans relation then it will be just the opposite that means <coughs> for disrotatory one will go inside another will go outside okay. if you have the trans relationship. So, I should write that so, what I am talking about is this, this is the double bond. So, if you have say B here and A is alpha, okay. so then that goes to the double bond here triene, but now the A and B are trans to each other. So, in disrotatory they maintain their trans relationship that means, if one goes inward the other goes outward and if A is outward then B will be inward. So, that is for disrotatory and for conrotatory A and B will be either both outward or both inward. Okay. Now, what happens here why nature has picked up light because if it is light and it is a 6 electron ring opening process. So, that will uh, there are rules for that and the rule says that 6 electron in presence of light will undergo a con rotatory motion and 4 electrons on the other hand um, will go for just a second 6 electron heat is disrotatory 6 electron light is con rotatory. Okay. So, if it is con rotatory then this hydrogen is alpha and this methyl is beta this methyl is beta. So, what will happen now as it is conrotatory 
So, actually this is written in little bit different way. So, maybe I will write that in the proper perspective that means, the product which is obtained here that is this double bond here and a double bond here and a double bond there and then you have this ring, you have a 5 membered ring that is ok, you have a ring here also and that is the weight and you have a methyl ok. Now, the because the methyl hydrogen uh, trans to each other to start with, so with light it will go in contradictory fashion, so they will now come both inwards ok. They will not be outwards because it will be very difficult if you have outward it will be very difficult to make this to complete these rings ok. So, that is why this process has to be contradictory in order to have a ring opening reaction and that is why it is it is done only in light ok. And then there is a thermal isomerization which is called a 1 5 hydrogen shift sigma tropic reaction this is called sigma tropic reaction ok. Sigma tropic reaction one of the hydrogen here of the methyl that goes to the 5 position ok that goes here. So, basically what you end up is a double bond at the ring junction and a double bond here and a double bond CH 2. This is how double bond CH 2 means the methyl that is the double bond CH 2. So, 1 5 sigma tropic and the uh, before that a light induced chondrodatory motion. So, this is the first uh, derivative of the first vitamin D which is biosynthesized inside the body and then there are hydroxylation that can take place. Hydroxylation at this point that gives it to gives you what is called this is called cholecalciferol the initial vitamin that is D 3 then chole then then calcidiol that is this is the 25th carbon. So, 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol and then another form is calcitriol and that is another further hydroxylation. So, this is triol this is diol and this is monoal ok. These are the three forms of vitamin D 3. What is their function? Their function is basically to maintain the proper uh, calcium uh, proper calcium which uh, calcium ion and which supports the development of the bone ok. So, that is very important and that is why you know that uh, when babies are born usually the vitamin D synthesis they are they are put on outside uh, with a message of this oil uh, which contains uh, this this cholesterol. So, as you shine light so that uh, that goes to the uh, because light they have to put into the light to in order to have this chondrotatory ring opening and then thermal isomerization, but that is thermal that is not photochemical. So, the first one is photochemical and it has to be photochemical because then you what you need is a chondrotatory motion you do not need any disrotatory motion ok. So, that is the uh, and this UV it requires the uh, radiation of 270 to 300 nanometer. So, you require exposure to sunlight, but not in the visible light it happens, it happens in the uh, in the long wavelength UV light ok, but that is there always along with the sunlight. Now, next come to the vitamin E that is also very quickly we will go through that is vitamin E is also not a uh, coenzyme, these are different types of vitamin E this is a remember this is again a fat soluble vitamin. So, it has got a long fatty chain ok. What it has is a wedge group here that is what is important all these gamma, beta, delta and alpha basically have the same skeleton only that they are their substitution pattern is different. This has got 3 methyls, this has got 2 methyls, these 2 ones no and uh, this is this does not have this methyl and it has got only one methyl that is delta tocopherol. So, tocopherol is the name given to the vitamin E and this is an antioxidant, antioxidant means it can neutralize radicals ok. So, what is the structure I will not write the full structure. So, it has got a structure like this a wedge here ok 
and then with different substituents here. So, when you have a radical produced in the body, so this will immediately donate the hydrogen okay. and then it becomes O dot. This is highly stable because this O dot can in principle can go into resonance and form a uh, via resonance it can form a radical here okay. and remember this is actually uh, so one two one this is wrong something wrong here one methyl one two three four okay so there is a radical which is tertiary radical that is generated so it is basically a reversible um, connection reversible connection between uh, this radical here at the carbon or the oxygen radical okay so basically it neutralizes any radical that is produced in the body and these radicals are basically outcome of reactive oxygen species so, vitamin E is very important because as I saw it that these radicals are associated with uh, degenerative diseases or mutation these radicals can bring many mutations in the gene and which can cause cancer diseases like cancer and then um, also other uh, like gout, aging all these things are there. Vitamin E as I, say, I already told you that vitamin E forms this radical here it abstracts any R dot. Uh, it donates the hydrogen forms this radical, this radical is very stable because it can go into this tertiary radical, but it has to be brought back to the again the original form. Okay. It cannot be in the radical form, now the vitamin C that is there. So, vitamin C is also essential to bring the, the vitamin E free radical into the uh, again back to the tocopherol. Okay. So, and vitamin C is also an antioxidant that means. So, this itself is oxidized and then uh, in turn it produces the vitamin E that is the tocopherol okay. and then vitamin C later on uh, gets back into the uh, it goes in the oxidized form and then it is reduced by, uh, by some other means okay, which is um, which may come later on as we discuss vitamin C. So, that is um, basically the chemistry of um, biochemistry of the lipid soluble vitamin. We have just kept the vitamin K, we have not discussed vitamin K yet that will come little later in the next session. Okay. Thank you.